Assalamualaikum and good morning. My name is Latifah Radia Binti Saleh and my partner is Aino Sofia Binti Muhammad Nizam. Today, we will present about evolution of pteridophytes. Okay, subtopic evolution of pteridophytes megaphys is located in the chapter 23, Plant Evolution and Diversity. The page is 419 to 423. At the end of the lesson, you will get three linear outcomes, which is identify three types of pteridophytes, compare and contrast microfilm and megafilms, and then lastly, identify the components of the fern's life cycle. This is our presentation flow. First, what is pteridophyte? Second, differences between megafilms and microfilms. Third, uh, horse tails, with ferns, ferns, and the lastly is life cycle. Okay, basically, what is pteridophytes? Okay, pteridophyte is a group of seedless vascular plants, including ferns and their allies, the hostels and with ferns, which mean um, pteridophytes have three types of plants, which is freeze ferns, hostels, and ferns. Okay, both, pterido both pteridophytes and seed plants have megapils, so which means that these three plants have megafils, which is um, the seedless. As we can see in the slide, there is a table of comparison between megafils and microfils. Okay, uh, the first factor is number of vascular tissue. Megafils have several branches of vascular tissue and broader, while microfils have a single strand of vascular tissue, which is quite narrow. Okay, based on the first um, comparison, which is number of vascular tissue, we can say that megafils have a uh, more broader leaves compared to microfils. Okay, second number of vein, megafils contain a multiple vein, while microfils contain a single vein which is unbranched. So the leaves of the megafils is um, contain many vein, while microfils contain one vein which is um, which is the line of the center of leaves. Okay, third location. Megafils occur in angiosperms, gymnosperms, and the fronts of sperms, while microfils occur in lysophytes and horsetails. The factor of function. Megafils allow, allow plants to efficiently collect solar energy, leading to the production of more food, and lastly, possibility of producing more offspring than plants without megafils. While microfils undergo photosynthesis. Okay, uh, for the function, um, actually megafils also, uh, both megafils and microfils undergo photosynthesis. But megafils is more uh, function because of they have uh, broader leaves compared to microfils. Okay, there are two diagrams that gives us comparison between microfil and megafil. Okay, look at the microfil first. Okay, um, the as we can see, the leaves of microfil is more small um, because it contains the single vein, which means located at the center of the of the leaf. Plus, there is no leaf gap between stems and uh, and the leaf. Okay, for the megafils, as we can see, um. The leaves is more broader because of uh, it contains more veins, which is located at the center and the both side of the leaves. Plus, there is no leaf gap between stem and um, leaf. Okay, let's move to the second diagram. Okay, for the microfils, uh, as we can see, the vascular tissue of the stem is grow longer until the sporangia grow at the uh, on the B side of the stem, and then the branch and the branch uh, grow longer and until the leaf grow uh, at the end of the branch which means the single branch um, becomes the single vein okay for the megafils the stem grow and and their and their growth separated in many branches okay as we can see um, the other stems become reduced and flattened. Um, the branches is of overtopping growth, and then the branches, the branches mature 
until the leaves grow and contain many veins. Okay, we move to the type of pteridophytes. Okay, one of the type of pteridophytes is hostels. It consists of one genus, Equisetum, and approximately 25 species of distinct seedless vascular plants. Most hostels inhabit wet, marshy environments around the globe. Okay, um, we can say that um, hostels plant is growth in the wet environment and it also can inhibit weight. About 300 million years ago, hostels were dominant plant and grew as large as modern trees. Okay, from the statement, um, it actually um, hostels plants already exist a long time ago and it can grow as large as modern trees because of they grow for a long time. The stems are tough and rigid because of silica deposited in cell walls. As we can see in the picture, the stem of the hostel is look like the bamboo trees. Okay, uh, it actually um, hard as the bamboo trees. Okay, because of the stem of the hostels contains cell walls that deposited by the silica. That's why it look tough and rigid and and grow strong. The skirt-like slender green side branches make the plant bear a resemblance to a hostess. Okay, as we can see in the picture, the bend down one is actually uh, the bend down and skirt-like is actually the branches, not the leaves. The leaves of the hostess is actually attached to the stem. The spore germinate into inconspicuous and independent gametophytes. Okay, the spore located in the strobilus. The strobular structure is actually the top of the um, of the plant. Equisetum spores are sensitive to humidity and are spring loaded. When conditions are right, the spores to be ejected and travel upwards of two months in an hour. Okay, um, as I said uh, previously, the spore located in the strobilus and when the conditions are right, which is the spores become matched, it can travel far away from the hostel and it spread and grow um, far away from, from, from parent plant and grow at everywhere. Okay, the second type of pteridophytes is with ferns. It is represented by genera Silatum and Mesipteris which are native to tropical and subtropical regions. Okay, as we can see the in the picture, the wish fern has no leaves. But how the photosynthesis of this plant happen? Okay, it's actually um, the branches carry on the photosynthesis. That's why selective and selective species resemble a wish broom. A horizontal rhizome gives rise to above growth above ground stems repeatedly for Okay, um, let's see. Let, let's look to the structure of the wrist fern. As we can see, the rhizome is horizontal. It it is because it easy to give rise to set stem. The pumpkin shaped sporangia are born on short side branches. Okay, let's look the sporangium that attached to the branch. It's look like the pumpkin shape. Okay, thank you Latifa. So we'll proceed to the next uh, trade of white plants which is ferns. Ferns can be found most abundant in warm, moist, tropical regions but also be found in temperate regions. Several species of ferns can be found in a dry and rocky place and several species of ferns can be found in an aquatic life. So here's an example of ferns which are leather leaf ferns, tree ferns and hard style ferns. For the leather leaf ferns, leather leaf ferns have fronts that are broad with subdivided leaflets. Leather leaf ferns are usually used for the flower arrangement, maybe because the beautiful structure of the leaf makes it suitable for the flower arrangement. Next is the tree fern. Tree ferns uh, can be found mostly with a height of 1.4 meter long. And next is hard stung fern. Hard stung ferns have a strap line and leathery structure of a leaf. And this is not stated in the mother textbook, but I find the internet that hard stung fern can help us to cure the digestive problem and also diarrhea.
Okay, so next we will proceed to the frame life cycle. Okay, frame life cycle consists of several phases, which is the sporophyte, the spongia, the spores, the gametophytes, the fertilization, the zygote, and the last one is the fronds. Okay, so the first phase of the frame life cycle is the sporophyte. The sporophyte portion of the life cycle is dominant in ferns. So basically, what is the sporophyte? So I will give the rough idea about the fern life cycle start with the sporophyte. Okay, the sporophytes are developed by zygote. Zygote are produced by the fertilization between the haploid egg cell and haploid sperm cell. So if you guys want to know more about this, uh, let's proceed to the next slide. Okay, so we proceed to the next uh, phase of the fern life cycle which is the sporangia. Actually, the sporangia is an uh, important component in the fern life cycle because the sporangia will be released the spores. Okay, so where is the sporangia located? The sporangia located within the sorus and under the leaflets. And also, the sporangium will be shielded by the thin protective structures called indusia. So, this is the structure of the sporangium, as you can see in this picture. The next phase of the fruit life cycle is the spores. What happens in the spores phase is, within a sporangium, the mysis will occur and the spore will be produced. When it comes to time, the sporangium will open and the spore will be released. So what happened to the spores? The spores will be redistributed by the wind, land and germinate. So the next phase is the gametophytes. A spore will germinate into a protellus that consists of two components which is the antheridium and archegonia. So this is the picture of a fern gametophytes or protellus. So it consists of three components here which is archegonia Antheridia and rhizoids. So, Archegonia is located at the top of the protellus. Antheridia is located between the Archegonia and the rhizoids. And basically, what is the function of rhizoids actually? Rhizoids is to anchor the protellus to the soil and to absorb the nutrients for the protellus. This is the fertilization. In order for the fertilization to occur, the ferns must be in the moisture condition. Why? It is because to allow the sperm in the anthurium to swim to the egg in the archegonium so that the fertilization will occur and the zygote will be formed. So if you guys cannot imagine how it's happened, you guys can refer to the pictures in the slide. So, so the next phase is the zygote. So what happened in the zygote is the zygote will undergo mitosis to form young sporophyte or the gametophytes. As a result, as you can see here, the first leaf will be appear above the protellus and the roots will be appear below the protellus. So the last phase is the fronds. The front, what happened in the fronds? The sporophyte develops a root bearing rhizome from which the area fronds project. So the sporophytes uh, develops the root bearing root rhizome. So basically, what is rhizome? Rhizome is uh, res responsible for the production of a root and responsible to absorb water and nutrients from the soil to the fronds. Okay, did you notice there is a feeder head here? What is feeder head actually? Feeder head is the fronds of the young fern. So basically, people eat it because feeder head contains many nutrients. Okay, to make it clear, it all started with the sporophyte. The sporophyte contain the sporangium. The sporangium will release the spore and the spore will germinate and become a protellus. The protellus consists of two components which is antheridium and archegonia. And then the protellus will produce the sperm and the sperm will swim from the antheridium to the archegonia and then we produce a zygote so the zygote will develop and we keep the sporophyte so uh, and then it will repeat the same uh, the sporophyte has a sporangium that will be released the spores so basically that's all that you need to know for the fern life cycle so that's all from us thank you